Well, welcome to our uh, flip class uh, lesson on uh, types of reactions. So I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I'm kind of fighting a cold. It's pretty cold in the room this morning. So uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at this. So so go ahead and take, get out your notes. And uh, there's five main types of reactions that we're going to talk about. <clears throat> there's all kinds of different types of reactions, but a lot of them kind of fall into these five main categories. So. So the first one, what I've done, actually for all of these, is set up, uh, uh, show you a couple examples. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the general format first. <clears throat> and we're going to use these symbols. So we're going to use E for element, uh, any single element by itself. Could be a diatomic also. Uh, and C for compound. So it's a formula. Uh, we're going to use C just a, as a general uh, way to identify compounds. So. What we'll do first is we'll take a minute and uh, we'll go ahead and write out just the general formats for these examples. And I only pulled a couple examples. Probably I should have added a few more, but this should get the point across. So, so if you take a look at <clears throat> this first type of reaction, you have an element plus an element reacting to form a compound, to yield a compound. And on this side we have a compound plus a compound, yielding a compound. You can put these together if you want to work ahead a little bit. Um, the other type that I didn't put, I need to add an example to these notes, but we could have an element plus a compound, one a compound. Or we could have a compound plus an element. The order on um, the uh, side of the arrow on the products or the, rea or the reactants or the product side doesn't really matter the order as long as they're there. So if you notice, hopefully you notice a little trend here. And one thing that's similar between all of these <clears throat> the reactant side is different, uh, but what's the same is you get a single compound. And that's just a kind of a general trend here, is you get one compound. I'm going to abbreviate it as C, out. So you get one formula, one compound out. So, okay? And the name for these kind of makes sense. Um, you're combining things together, and you're putting things together. Um, so the generic term for these are synthesis reaction or a combination reaction. So when you synthesize things, you're putting things together um, or combining things together, combination reaction, combining whatever element or compounds together, but you only get one single compound out. And that's a pretty, uh, pretty common reaction. We'll look at uh, a couple of these in a lab that we're going to be doing here. Uh, in about a week or so. Okay, so there's the first one. So why don't you go ahead using that one as kind of a model. Go ahead and <clears throat> write out the symbols over here and hopefully you pick up on uh, what's similar between these two types of reactions. So go ahead and pause the video, write out the symbols and uh, pick up on the similarities between the, um, those types of reactions based on what we did on the first one. Alright, so hopefully you realize you got a compound Go into an element plus an element. Compound, go into two compounds. And then the other type, and I need to add examples again to this note, could be a compound going to an element plus a compound. And hopefully it's evident, it's uh, obvious that the difference here is it's just a flip. You're starting with the compound. So you start. You start with one compound, so that's the key. So, and the name for this actually kind of makes sense. You may pick this up in the notes that we've done in class, or maybe uh, from looking at the book. Um, it's called a decomposition reaction. <coughs> so, a decomposition reaction where things are breaking down, things are decomposing. So that name kind of fits. So, uh, uh, we've got a. Synthesis combination, things are coming together, and a decomposition reaction where things are breaking apart. So kind of related, just opposites of each other. Okay. The third type <coughs> and the fourth type are kind of similar. So um, the uh, third type of reaction, hopefully you recognize, the only difference between the third and the fourth type is in the third one, you have an element, the, uh, go to the right color, element plus a compound, going to a compound plus an element. The order over here doesn't, write, uh, doesn't matter. You could have C plus E going to E plus E, it doesn't matter. Versus a compound plus compound going to compound plus compound. 
So that's the only difference between the two. So you've got an element in the third one. And hopefully you uh, kind of recognize there's a little switcher going around. So if you take a look in here, what happens in this type of reaction is the uh, ions are switching places. So the magnesium is going to switch place with the uh, switch place with the zinc. So the magnesium <coughs> kicks the zinc out and uh, forms the compound with the nitrate ion, and then the zinc goes by itself. So okay. So this one is called a single replacement or displacement. Single replacement versus uh, displacement, and then the fourth type is called a double replacement. Oops, double replacement. Or displacement. Be consistent, I guess. Or So hopefully you notice in this one, these ions are switching. So the sodium and the cadmium switch. So the sodium, <coughs> the sodium goes with the nitrate, and then the cadmium goes with the, uh, the sulfur. Okay. So the only difference between those is an element versus a compound in that first step. One of the keys for both of these, though, is to make sure you use your charges, your oxidation number, For the formulas. We'll go over this more in class. We'll do an example or two in class. But make sure you use your charges for the or the formulas for the products. You can't just put the magnesium with the nitrate. And I happen to pick a poor example, but I should change this, but that's fine. You'll see in class, you can't just totally switch these. You're going to have to use your charges, your oxidation numbers, to predict the formulas on the right. And you're going to see that. We'll do an example two in class, and you'll also see that in the We'll be working on. But again, uh, put that same note <coughs> in here. Um, so use your charges. Or put a little arrow down below, whatever works for you, for the product formulas. Okay. And then the last type on there, the fifth that we're going to deal with, looks like this. Most of them are going to kind of look like the top one. Occasionally you're going to see something on the bottom one. But one thing hopefully you recognize once you do a few of these is in general this is going to be the same. So um, you'll have uh, a hydrocarbon, of some kind of compound with carbon and hydrogen in it, uh, burning in oxygen gas to produce CO2, H2O energy. So the general layout for these would be a hydrocarbon. Plus the oxygen. Oxygen is diatomic, so it'll go to yielding water. <coughs> Whoops, just let me do my same order. Carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Okay. And that'll be uh, pretty similar to all of these. Occasionally we'll see them referred to this way as an element plus oxygen goes to a compound. Most of the time it's going to be the top one. So. And that is a combustion reaction. Deal with several of these. We'll talk about these in the lab and some more in class. But these combustion reactions are all over the place. Let me uh, put a couple other examples up here. Get this stuff out of the way. And you see other um, combustion reactions all over the place. If you think of what's going on in your body as a combustion reaction, uh, going back to your biology, hopefully uh, you realize that simple sugar is one of our basic fuels for a body. So that glucose. C6H12O6 will react with oxygen to produce CO2, water, and energy in the form of ATP. Let's go back to bio. So we'll get into the efficiency of these reactions um, um, probably in the next couple weeks. Next couple weeks. So your car, think of your car, combustion reaction in your car, you're burning your gas. And the <coughs> compounds in your gasoline are pretty complex. There's all kinds of different types of 
compounds in there, uh, hydrocarbons in there, and it varies based on uh, where the oil, original oil came from. So it's pretty complex, but the same general reaction applies. There's all kinds of other side reactions going on, getting way more complex, but the same type of thing. Obviously, you're not producing ATP, you're producing uh, uh, heat and other, uh, other uh, forms of energy there. And if you think of your house, it's going through a combustion reaction, especially if you're burning wood or gas, natural gas or anything like that. And then uh, some homes back east burn oil. Not too many houses uh, out west will burn oil, but it's a very similar reaction. So this combustion reaction is going on all over the place. So, so just kind of reviewing what we did. <clears throat> so the first two are pretty simple, similar. So, uh, kind of a generic statement for this one would be um, combine two or more substances. Substance being an element or a compound to get one out. That's kind of a generic, maybe a generic way to think about this. You get one compound out. So go ahead and pause the video and take a minute or so to go ahead and write your own genetic, or generic I should say, generic way to think about decomposition, a single double replacement, and then combustion. So go ahead and pause the video, take a second like I did on this first one, just take a second to kind of write your own generic thought or a way to describe that uh, in your own words. Okay? So after you've done that, uh, kind of one way I like to think about this is you have one substance broken down, you can say you know, into two or more substances, it doesn't matter, but one substance broken down, decomposition, I think it totally fits. Single or double, or I'm sorry, single uh, replacement or displacement, element, element by itself, an atom by itself, switches with positive ion. So it's the positive ion up front. So this is an element, magnesium, so it's by itself would be a two plus charge, so it's going to switch with the zinc, which is positive. So the two positives switch, but this is a single element. So I, that's the way I like to think of it. Whatever works for you, just go for it. <coughs> and in this one, the positive ion switch. Two positive ions switch. You've got to use your charges again. We'll come back and you know, reinforce that a little bit. Occasionally, the negative ions will switch. And if I remember right, I think the lab we're going to do the two negative ions switch. So keep that in mind. It won't always be the positives. Um, so sometimes the negative will switch. And I think in the lab, it'll be a reaction like this where I think the negative will switch. I can't recall right off the top of my head, but I'm just saying in general, most of the time the positives will switch. And then the last one, you'll have a hydrocarbon. most of the time reacting with oxygen. And that's kind of the generic, I think the easiest way to think about that. To produce the carbon dioxide and water. And we'll go over this more and you'll see more of this in class. So, okay. so go ahead and uh, finish that up and we'll talk more about this in class. Thanks. <coughs>